This is a picture of an English nurse who volunteered to go overseas to India in 1961. She looked after young Tibetan refugees for almost two years before working at a leprosy colony. The nurse was Valerie Hager, my grandmother, who died in 2002. She was an extremely altruistic person who devoted several years of her life to humanitarian efforts. After acquiring a basic knowledge of the world through the education system, she decided to take actions that would make an impact on others around the world. Her ordinary education set her, an extraordinary person, on the path to action. In my opinion, we need to create an extraordinary education system that will send everybody on the path to action. We not only need to understand the world, we also need to change it. Students need to be encouraged to become engaged and active in their learning and to transfer that into action directed at current problems. We need to be active, not passive, about problems in the real world. My grade five teacher, Duncan Knight, used a simulation activity that encompassed world issues similar to those in current events. His idea was to build on our knowledge of the world and to teach us in a way that we would become engaged. It encompassed issues such as capitalism, communism, taxes, and inflation. It was a simulation called the paperclip economy, in which paperclips replaced dollars as a form of currency. The economy began as a command economy, where the only way to make money was from randomly assigned classroom jobs. Eventually, small businesses began to arise, gradually gaining more power and wealth. At this point, everything was going smoothly. But, <laughs> a few months into the paperclip economy, Mr. Knight ran out of paperclips. <laughs> Remember, this is how he paid us. Many of us had found ways to make money through the selling of objects and services, no longer relying on a government salary. The most successful of these businesses was Bank 101, a bank and credit card company that I co-owned. Things got tricky when we loaned Mr. Knight paperclips to pay our classmates. <laughs> this is where we learned the importance of written contracts. Mr. Knight convinced us not to make him sign a loan. And when the time came for him to repay us, he refused to pay us back. We badgered him for repayment and instead learned about slander and propaganda. <laughs> Mr. Knight made videos and news broadcasts accusing us of counterfeiting paperclips and of slandering the government. <laughs> From that point onward, the members of Bank 101 and Mr. Knight engaged in a routine quite similar to question period. Every time he made a decision, we would yell questions at him to which he would try to spin a positive response. After a great deal of pressure from the citizens of Division 6, Mr. Knight declared an election. The foreigners of Bank 101 ran for government, determined to bring Mr. Knight's tyrannical reign to an end. <laughs> Mr. Knight and his party also ran. This is where we learned about elections. During the campaign period, we made a great deal of promises, granted numerous favors, worked to forge contracts, and criticized Mr. Knight's campaign platform. The tipping point was the leaders' debate, in which we were finally allowed to formally poke holes in Mr. Knight's arguments. From that point onward, it was clear that Bank 101 had taken the lead. We won the election in a vote of 17 to 7 a few days later. Although this was two years ago, I still remember all the lessons like it was yesterday. We were all active learners, engaging the lessons rather than relying on our teacher to guide us through every step of the simulation. Initially, students only had the power to buy and sell what we pleased. But gradually, the balance of power tipped until students have full control of the economy. The best part was when we were the leaders instead of the followers. We were free to mold the economy into something of our own design instead of something that our teacher created. Yet somehow, even though we managed to shape the paperclip economy in our own vision, we still ended up learning what a teacher originally intended to teach us. Now, I understand that it is difficult for teachers to create learning activities 
that appeal to every student. Yet despite this, every single student participated enthusiastically in the paperclip economy. The paperclip economy encompassed issues such as totalitarianism, ethics, propaganda, slander, wealth, and democracy. After we've been through the economy, we've been through a microcosm of the real world and issues that are relevant in our world today. This broadened the scope of understanding around issues that we could relate to. For example, Mr. Knight initially acted as an impressive dictator, putting us through a period of time with no democracy and subjecting us to unfair rules. One year after the paperclip economy, my class was watching a documentary about North Korea. Like Mr. Knight's government, the North Korean government puts out propaganda videos, has a state owned media, and glorifies their leader without the citizens' best interest at heart, just as Mr. Knight did in the paperclip economy. <laughs> the paperclip economy still helps me understand and relate to current events. The paperclip economy not only helped me learn, it helped me take an active role in my learning. This is where you come in. I challenge you to create engaging learning experiences in which your children and students are active, not passive. Encourage all your students to take an active role in their learning. Help us take action in the classroom and at home and help us to bring that action into the real world. If an ordinary person can understand the world and has the empathy to care about it, then they can change it. My generation faces extraordinary challenges. We must deal with rapidly changing technology and the growing threat of global warming. We can't rely on extraordinary people like my grandmother to create all the change in the world. Ordinary people can be extraordinary. We need to make a bridge between education and action. And maybe that bridge should be made out of paperclips. Thank you.